Hey y'all, this is Jeff, call sign KD0SMQ. Today I'm going to do a quick comparison between the HackRF1 and the HackRF Blue software defined radio boards. So here's a HackRF1. Um, there's his antenna port, SMA, and you've got the reset and DFU mode buttons. Immediately you'd notice that the HackRF1's in a nice plastic case with a nice label. Here's your clock in and clock out headers and your micro USB interface. If you look at the bottom of the case, you'll see that it's got four rubber feet so that the device doesn't slide around on any smooth surface that you might place it on. Here's the HackRF Blue board and immediately you'd notice that it doesn't have the same plastic case but instead has two acrylic sheets that the PCB is sandwiched in between. Here's your clock in and your clock out and uh, your micro USB interface, side view, you've got your antenna port there and your reset and DFU mode buttons. There's a top down view. Behind the antenna port you'll see the RF shielding. Size wise they're the exact same size. Here's HackRF1's default antenna, uh, Ant 500. Here's the HackRF Blue unnamed antenna. going to zoom in here on the HackRF Blue PCB and uh, get a close-up view. You can see that large chip there uh, is the ARM processor and then up to the right is your FPGA. You can see the header there. Uh, there are several headers uh, that are brought out to, to various um, I.O. on both the uh, ARM and the FPGA. Here's your FPGA. There's HackRF Blue Software Defined Radio. Got your LEDs in your antenna port, your RF shielding, and back down to your ARM processor. So here's Ant 500. This is a $30 add on for HackRF1. When you feel it in your hands, it feels very solid. It's small, lightweight, and uh, it, it's something that you'd want to take out in the field with you and you wouldn't worry about breaking it uh, because it, it, it is solidly constructed. Its advertised frequency range is from 70 megahertz to 1 gigahertz. However, I've successfully um, gone out of that range up to 1.09 gigahertz and down to 50 megahertz. Here's HackRF Blue's default antenna and the base there is pretty beefy. If you unscrew that base you'll find a loading coil and I've noticed just in some basic testing that this antenna seems to perform better than Ant 500 at FM broadcast and I'm wondering if that coil has anything to do with that. Well this has been a uh, quick comparison between the HackRF Blue and the HackRF One. Both great boards. Um, if you're into software and you're into radio, uh, you can't go wrong with these. So anyway, uh, see you later.